Today, we're going to continue our discussion on European football transfers. Last week, we learned about the different types of transfers, from Bosman to regular to loans. Today, we're going to walk through how players are able to complete the transfer process. So what does the transfer process look like? We're going to go step by step through a transfer to illustrate the process by which players move from team to team in football. The first step is pretty simple. The buying club needs to find a player that they want to acquire. The player they hope to acquire must be 18 years old, and the selling club must give the buying club permission to speak to the player before negotiations begin. Teams evaluate players that they want to acquire through a few different ways. The wealthiest clubs have their own scouting systems, with professional scouts sent to other leagues to observe potential transfer targets. Players that pass the eye test, they look good on film and during the game, are also evaluated based on their statistics and underlying analytics. Some players that may look good just don't produce great statistics. Finally, teams can also acquire players or learn about certain players through their agents. Agents can contact teams to say that their player wants to play for a new team or that their player would make a good fit on a new team. Agents, scouting, and analytics are the main ways that players are evaluated for transfers. Once the player they want to acquire is found, and the selling club has given the buying club permission to consult with the player, step two begins. Step two is to ask the player if they are willing to transfer. Some players may want a new opportunity to prove themselves, a new contract, or even just a new set of teammates. Whatever their reason may be, as long as the selling team gives permission and the player is interested in transferring, a transfer can be worked out. Now the buying club usually contacts the player through their agent. Agents act as the intermediary between player and club, communicating the desired terms of a transfer agreement between player and the two clubs. Whether the agent is beneficial to the player, or the clubs, or even neither party, I'm not completely sure because agents usually take a cut of the transfer fee and the player's new contract in exchange for negotiating on behalf of the player. From my point of view, it could save everyone some money if agents were completely excluded from this negotiating process altogether. Now the other thing about agents and this process is that once the transfer agreements start to take shape and there's interest from both sides, the internet can start to shape the negotiation process. Rumors about transfers can start to spread on Twitter, and articles about the transfer may change the negotiating terms. One side may choose to leak the terms of the new contract to raise or lower the transfer price of the agreement to their benefit. If a guy wants to transfer but he has no preference on where he wants to transfer, a well-placed leak of the terms of the negotiation process can help raise the price of his own transfer and bring in more money for himself and for his agent. Or, the internet can completely ruin the negotiation process. Players may see the reaction to a transfer rumor and choose to change the terms of the agreement or even nullify the agreement completely. The rapid-fire nature of social media adds a completely new layer to the already complex negotiation process around transfers. Now, once the player has shown an interest in transferring between teams, the buying team then has to ask the selling team if they are willing to sell the player in a transfer deal. It should be noted that if any of the people involved in the transfer say no to the deal at some point, the whole process goes kaput. That's why it's so hard to make transfers work and why there's so much wishful thinking when it comes to a transfer between clubs. You can dream of an elite player moving to your favorite club, but there's so much negotiating that would need to happen to make that transfer actually work. If all of the parties to the deal, the agent, the player, and the two clubs agree that a transfer can take place, then the negotiations can begin. The buying club needs to agree on a transfer fee with the selling club in order to pry the player away from their old selling club. We learned earlier about some of the factors that alter the size of the transfer fee. Old guys are probably gonna fetch less than the young guys, and skilled guys are going to fetch more in the transfer fee than less skilled guys. There can also be specific clauses in a player's contract that make transfers more difficult. Many players in the Spanish La Liga have massive buyout clauses attached to their current contracts. These clauses have to be paid in addition to a transfer fee in order to pry away players from their current club. Leo Messi's buyout clause is about 800 the two clubs have to hash out a transfer fee and agree on the paying of that transfer fee, and then once that's all agreed upon, then the buying club must negotiate a new deal with their incoming player. Once a player is transferred, their old contract with their old selling club becomes moot. 
This is another key difference between North American professional sports and football transfers. In North America, the players and their contracts are traded from team to team. In Europe, the contracts are changed once the players change teams. In order to make the transfer legitimate, the player and the team must agree to a new salary, a new length of contract, and performance bonuses. The team and the player can agree to add clauses that pay players for sticking around for a longer period of time, which are called loyalty clauses, or they can add clauses that pay players for scoring a certain amount of goals, winning certain awards, or helping the team win certain championships. Remember from earlier that players in the Spanish La Liga have enormous buyout clauses. Those have to be added or they need to be discussed before they're added into any contract as well. Now, once all of that has been agreed upon, the transfer fee has been paid, and the proper authorities have okayed the transfer, such as FIFA and UEFA and the professional football associations of each country, the player is finally able to join their new club. That's a big if. As we learned before, there's a lot that needs to go right before transfers are made. There's a reason that there are twice as many failed transfers as completed transfers. But the transfers that do get completed, some of them can lead to great results down the line. David Beckham's transfer to the Los Angeles Galaxy redefined American soccer and brought increased attention to the MLS. Cristiano Ronaldo's transfer to Manchester United in 2006 helped bring a Premier League title to United and transformed Ronaldo into a superstar player. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about transfers and the transfer process. It's complex, and it has big money wrapped in it, and can fundamentally alter the football world for years to come. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Highly Technical Sports.